Okay, let's take some Time questions. Time for some questions. Let's do it. Your questions and some honest answers. All well, right. this first one comes from Kelly Pat, who says, I was saved several years ago, but I haven't felt God's presence in years. I see demonic visions and have severe attacks, almost as if something's trying to control me. Does this mean I've lost my salvation? I ask for forgiveness every day. I believe I need deliverance. Please help. I don't know enough about you to say clearly one way or the other what's going on, but I, I will say this, that if you are uh, vacillating in your uh, commitment to Jesus, you're vacillating in your faith, then you could expect a demonic uh, uh, activity against you because the devil would like to get you back in his fold. So the devil would do what he could to win you. There is a devil. There are demons. And uh, they, they can put thoughts in people's minds. Uh, you're not saved on account of a feeling. But if you don't feel like it, there comes a time, you know, the psalmist said, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. So the psalmist had sinned. He had engaged in adultery. He had had a person killed. I mean, he did, did some bad stuff. And he said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and take not your Holy Spirit from me. So he, he knew he had the Holy Spirit with him, but at the same time, the joy had departed. And I think that's something you have to remember. Your joy will leave if you're not living for the Lord. All right? This is a viewer who says, what is your opinion on covenants in the church? Recently, our church has pushed volunteers to sign covenants that support the leaders in their personal life and ministries, agreeing to be regular attendance on Sunday morning and to speak positively about the church wherever you go and to whomever you speak. From the info that I researched, a covenant in the church is supported nowhere in the Bible. What are your feelings about this? Well, I think it's the same thing. You're absolutely right. It's not supported. <clears throat> the idea of people coming together and signing a covenant, that goes way back to the founding of America. <clears throat> the, the first constitution, in a sense, was a covenant excuse me, <coughs> of the people. So there's nothing wrong with uh, an organization entering into solemn compact. But I think what you're talking about in that church, it far exceeds what we should expect. And to dominate somebody's thought processes is wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is Julie who says, I'm a registered nurse who works for a local hospital and have been there for years. Recently, the hospital has made mandatory requirements for every employee to receive the flu vaccine yearly. If employees do not comply, then they're fired. I personally don't want to inject my body with loads of preservatives and toxins yearly, despite the, quote, benefit, unquote, of not getting sick. What should I do? Is this even ethical or legal? Yeah, it's both ethical. You're working for a hospital, for heaven's sakes, and they're pushing flu shots. Uh, I, I, I don't have flu shots myself, uh, and I, I, I'm not sure I want them, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure that you need to have them, but you're working for a hospital, and the hospital is pushing flu shots because it's easier to deal with people who've had flu shots than those who have flu. And so what do you do? There is a lot of controversy about it, especially, I think, because they say that the strain that you're getting isn't what's going to happen that year. It's from the year before. Well, so. it's, it, it's too much confusion and mm -hmm. too much controversy. And I think for a, a hospital to force the employees to do this, I think is wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is Tony who says, Pat, how can I tell if I'm beyond repentance, sinning over and over by trampling on the Holy Spirit? Honestly, I really did not know that the Holy Spirit dwells within us, but now I do know, for I've learned the hard way. I very much still desire to do God's will and desire to go to heaven. If God will forgive me, a terrible backsliding, backsliding sinner. Look, all manner of sin and, and, uh, and evil can be forgiven the sons of men. And God is a forgiving God. Uh, I don't know what you're doing, but the big thing is he that knows the Lord doesn't keep on sinning. You don't keep on. It's continuing action in the Greek. You don't keep on doing it. And uh, you want to repent. God will receive your repentance. You can, it's like the thief on the cross. Who knows how many bad things he'd done, but he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. So that one confession, that did it. 
But he was sincere in doing it, and presumably, if he had ever gotten down off the cross, he would have begun to live that way. So that's the thing. You've got to live for the Lord. You've got to continue uh, doing it. And if he, the the well, what the Bible talks about is apostasy, where you turn away from the Lord and count the blood of Christ a despised thing. You're not doing that, and very few do. So, but that's what people worry about. All right.